What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network here and the paintbrush item recently came out in Splatoon as DLC as a weapon and a lot of people have really harsh criticisms when it comes to how to use it and in terms of how well it performs. Well today I'm going to be giving you, in my opinion at least, top five facts, things, slash, tips, whatever you want to call them, five things to know about the paintbrush item before you go into battle with this thing and automatically label it as bad. This will be one video of many and there will be a lot of strategies to take into account when using the paintbrush for a lot of different levels and whatnot so this video won't be taking into account the secondary weapon or the special because right now I just want to focus on the base of the basics you know we're just gonna be covering the paintbrush without the sprinkler or the ink strike that's it so the first fact slash tip slash advice observation in general about the paintbrush is that it's fucking fast I mean you'll be able to get to point A to point B in no time flat there's been plenty of times in situations where I've been in danger and I could just simply just walk away because the paintbrush, when you use that thing on the floor, you're basically sanic at that point and you'll be able to outrun mostly anybody in the game. Granted, they don't have a gun with really good range and they're helping you down. The paintbrush item is extremely fast and I feel like this is one really good benefit in a game that feels slow paced usually when you're not a squid. In fact, the paintbrush's speed, I feel, is almost equivalent to that of being a squid in paint when you're in the first place. Now, I cannot tell you how many times there's been a situation where I've been stuck in a clusterfuck of enemies and thinking that I'm about to die, but using the paintbrush on the ground, you can simply walk out of whatever situation you're in. Splat rollers can't keep up with you. Even people who have long range weapons usually can't keep up with you unless they get a jump on where you're going in the first place. The paintbrush is fast on the ground and this is one of the biggest benefits of using this thing, especially considering that, you know, Splatoon feels slow when you're not in squid form. And even when you are in squid form, the game does move at a slow pace. Still, paintbrush item is definitely appreciated in that regard. And if you want something that's gonna basically turn you into sanic on the field, then by all means, you're definitely not having a bad start with the paintbrush item. Like I said, it outruns rollers without a goddamn problem. And you can usually run out of any dangerous situation as long as you're aware of what's around you. So even though the benefit of using this thing is that it's really fast, the second fact, tip, slash, whatever we can cover is that it has very little attack power. I mean severely little. There's been a lot of situations, once again, that I found myself in dangerous scenarios and I have not been able to come out on top because this weapon's attack power is lacking. It's lacking when it's in the paintbrush form on the ground when you're going really fast and it's lacking when you're using it as an actual brush to spray paint around. The problem with this weapon when it comes to the attack power is that it, it does so little. Even when you're doing things that you would feel like could kill in much more hits or much less hits rather. So if you're running with the paintbrush on the ground per se, right? you're going to see that you can keep bumping into an enemy multiple times, but it will not kill. I try this even in the training room, and it took five hits on a regular neutral training balloon to be able to pop it, and that's when you're able to kill somebody. That's a KO counted, 100 damage, that's a KO on a regular person in a turf war or whatever. It took five hits of damage to take out one of those balloons, which means it'll take five hits of damage or less depending on the opponent's defense power-ups to be able to kill them on the battlefield when running into them with that paintbrush. So the main point of the paintbrush is don't use the rolling floor version of it to be able to kill enemies because you're gonna be severely disappointed. Even with a bunch of attack power-ups, you're not killing by anybody with this thing using it like a splat roller. There's no one hit KO when you run into them with it on the ground, and when you're using it as a paintbrush to try to hit them melee close range, it still takes a lot of hits to be able to kill someone. It, it, it's a little bit sad to be honest with you, because you would think that this weapon had a little bit more oomph to it when it came to killing potential, but it doesn't. Even though the individual hits don't do too much damage when you're swinging it around as a melee weapon, the good thing about it is that the speed of this thing when you're using it in melee is extremely fast. So even though it lacks the attack power, it has the speed and spamminess of you smashing the button in to be able to make up for it to an extent. So if you're close range with somebody, don't just press the button once and hold it down because if you hold down the attacking button, you will not do multiple hits, you'll just do one. You have to mash that button as fast as possible <laughs> and in turn your character will mash their attack button well you know swing the paintbrush as fast as possible and that's where you can really succeed with getting in on those close range kills i hate to get into more negative about this weapon but another thing that really is a ball buster is that this thing uses up an extreme amount of ink when you're painting on the floor with it when you're attacking with it close range this thing is like ink glassware and the, the, the problem with this is that even though you can run out of a lot of enemy situations with really high speed, 
you might run out of fucking paint before you're able to get out of the situation in the first place. So even though you may be able to avoid a lot of enemies with the speed that you have with this paintbrush without even any speed power-ups, if you run out of ink in the interim, then, you know, what's the point? You have to really keep an eye on your ink consumption rates. And I'm guessing a lot of people would say use the power-ups that give you more ink supply when you actually go into a squid form or power-ups that don't you know make it so you use up as much ink when you're in the paintbrush's speed form but I mean still it will be an ink guzzler as you guys can see here on the training video I was trying to run from point A to point B on both sides of the training field and it used up almost my entire supply be conscious of your ink supply with this thing. You constantly go into squid form. You can't really put the ink supply in the back of your head like you can with other weapons because it will run out on you when you need it the most. The number four fact, tip, whatever you may call it, about the paintbrush is that you are able to run through enemy territory without a damn care in the world, provided that your ink supply stays with you. Now, the thing is, is that you, know, you can get this effect from the ink roller, but it's severely slower than the paintbrush. And I feel like even though you can't see the direct benefit from it, there's a lot of benefit to be able to run through the enemy's territory with the paintbrush and them not even be able to touch you because you're so fast. Which is why I feel like you definitely have to capitalize on speed when you're using this thing. But when you're usually in enemy territory, you can run amok on their side. Granted that they don't have uh, a paintbrush themselves, which can run up on you because like I said, no one's really gonna be able to keep up with you as long as you know how to maneuver yourself. And there's a lot of ways to be able to maneuver yourself so you don't get shot shot by somebody long range if you are in their territory and using speed to your advantage. Speed is a super valuable asset in this game, one that's extremely difficult to get your hands on, but with the paintbrush, you have it all the time at a big cost of ink, but when you're on that enemy turf, you can really stir shit up and that can distract them long enough to be able to have allies come through. And that makes a point that I'll get to at the end of this video. But yeah, number four is definitely the fact that you can run amok on your enemy side. And number five, I really hate to end this on a bad note, but it has to be said, the worst, well, you know, it can be debated. Like one of the worst attributes of this thing is definitely the ink consumption, but I feel the absolute worst is the range of this weapon because it is so misleading in so many regards. Now, I wanna show you guys some clips of when I was in the training room. Now, as you can see in the training room, the range of the weapon, it's not that great, but you know, I mean, it's, it, I mean, it, it's acceptable but it's not that great. But the problem is that even though it looks like it has a lot of range on it, it's extremely misleading because there can be enemies, like you can see the balloons here, which are in range of where your paint is splattering when using the melee aspect of the weapon, but they don't get damaged at all when they're inside of the paint vicinity of when it's getting thrown out. So it kind of boggles my mind because how in God's name is this weapon able to have range enough to be able to cover where the enemy is around but not actually damage them? This is a problem in so many regards because when you're in situations of combat, you could feel like, okay, I'm close enough to be able to kill this guy only to use the melee attacks constantly and yet not hit a goddamn thing. It's so insane. So there'll be a lot of times when you're playing this thing for the first time, well, you'll run up to someone, and you'll be swinging that thing like crazy, and they'll just pop you really quick because, you know, you're not hitting them, even though you feel like you should be. One thing that I saw that helps remedy the range a little bit is the fact that jumping constantly when using the paintbrush, so you're kind of like jumping up and down using it, actually helps to increase the range. As you guys can see in the clips, even though when standing on the ground and swinging the paintbrush, the range of the paint is very misleading and doesn't hit when you're in the same spot and you start jumping with it, you're actually able to hit the balloons a lot more consistently. And this is something that you have to use when you're on the battlefield. When you see somebody right there and they're in front of you, to increase that range, you have to constantly jump with the paintbrush. And I know it might seem like a hassle, but just spam the attack button and the jump button at the same time, and it's a lot easier to be able to get those kills when you need them. One other thing that I don't like about the paintbrush's range is that it's unable to hit enemies that are directly next to you, even though the range of the brush hits the sides of you directly. As you can see here once again in the training room, when I was right next to these balloons, the paintbrush did not hit them, despite me actually being right next to them and the brush animation going straight through them, it still wasn't able to hit them. The range of this weapon is probably one of the most disappointing things about it. And I feel bad about that because it's misleading. It doesn't hit the way that it looks and you have to really be able to gauge your spacing perfectly if you want this weapon to truly benefit. 
Usually, when you feel like you're close to the enemy to be able to kill them, get a little bit closer, which is possible because of the speed, but it's also dangerous because of the lacking attack power. It'll take way more effort for you to kill them than for them to kill you if you both see each other at the same time. So please take this into account when using the weapon. All of these facts all together, they may make the weapon seem like it's not as much of a pickup and play, but that's the main reason why I like it. This is one of the most unique... I mean, you can't even call it a gun. This is one of the most unique weapons I've ever seen in a third-person shooter. And I don't think we'll ever see anything like this again in terms of other future third-person shooters. It's a really unique attribute kind of thing, and I like it for that reason, you know? It's not something that you can just pick up and go to town with. It requires a lot of thought, precision, tactics, and I feel like once you can get the hang of this, you can start pulling in games at top rank with no problem. I'll be doing more videos on coverage of the paintbrush. Let me, guys, let me um, you guys let me know in the comments what you want to know more about this thing. I'll be putting out videos on a regular basis using this because I love this weapon because it isn't so easy to pick up and play with. I really like the fact that it requires way more investment in terms of learning how it works than just shooting somebody with it and calling it a day. But that's just my opinion. These are five facts, tips, whatever's about the paintbrush. I'll talk to you guys in the next I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care of yourself and of course as usual please have yourself a damn good one.